If you're a beginner in Fusion, things can be a little bit intimidating. Here's my five major tips that will get you off and running and use Infusion in no time. First tip is how to open a shot or open a new comp in Fusion. Essentially, there's two ways to do this. One is you have a clip already on the timeline here and then click on the Fusion page. And that's going to bring that into Fusion. By default, it's going to bring in the whole clip. It's going to set the in and out. I'll just make this a little brighter so we can see it. And there we have our clip in Fusion and we can do all of our magic to it. Magic, 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 magic. The other way you can get a comp going in Fusion is you can just make a new comp in the media pool, this place over here. You can right click in the empty space and go down to new Fusion composition. Click on that and it will ask you about the kind of composition you want to make. So I could just say my Fusion comp. Here you can set your duration, your starting time code, your frame rate, all of that stuff that's sort of important and hit create. And then that'll put that little buddy right here. Double click on this Fusion Composition to open up a blank Fusion Composition here in the Fusion page. And any changes that you make, we'll just make a background and make it red. That's going to live right here in this clip in the media pool. Then you can drag this into your timelines and you can add that to any timeline you want. Tip number two, how nodes work. I have a lot of videos on how nodes work. So if you wanna get deeper into that, there is a plethora of resources for you. But in a nutshell, you have the beginning, the starting point, and the ending point. The beginning here is called the media in. So this brings in your footage and the media out. This is what gets rendered to the timeline. And any fanciness that I do in Fusion is going to happen in between these two nodes. So if I wanna make this clip brighter, I can grab a node like brightness and contrast and put it in between these two nodes and I can push that up and that's going to make my resulting image brighter. But it's only going to do that if I actually run this node flow through the nodes like this. If this isn't connected, it can be in the middle all day. I mean, it could just be, it could be super in the middle. It could be, it could be Malcolm in the middle. You were right. You can't beat the system, but you sure can break it. <laughs> But because it's not connected, that means that it's not going to affect this image. It has to be connected. So how you connect nodes are you grab this little square and you click and drag and you drop it on whatever node you want to connect it to next. So I'll drop this onto brightness and contrast and then take the output of brightness and contrast and plug that into my media out. And there I have my brighter image. And the flow by default goes from left to right. So this is step one, this is step two, and this is step three. So we're bringing in our footage we're brightening it and then we're putting it back on the timeline. I have this bright footage here. If I switch back over to my edit page, then it is in fact bright. So anything that I'm doing in Fusion is being put right back here into this clip on the timeline, which is the magic of having Fusion inside of Resolve. And again, this kind of goes in order. So I want to grab my footage, make it brighter, and then let's make it blurry. I'm gonna take a blur node, drag this in, make it blurry. Now I have a blurry, bright version of the footage. I can take any of these nodes and disable them just with this little switch right here. And I can make that a darker blurry version or a brighter, not blurry version, whatever I want to do. But that's kind of the big idea behind nodes. It's like a flow chart. Tip number three, how the heck layers work when you have nodes. This is a big one. If you're familiar with Resolve, you'd know that all of these buttons up here open up various panels and you can search through all the panels you want, you can look all around, and you will not find a layers panel in Fusion, which if you think about compositing and doing things like Photoshop does, will probably strike panic into the hearts of many. <laughs> but don't worry, just because we don't have a layers panel doesn't mean that we don't have a way to put one image over another or to stack elements, to put text over things, whatever we wanna do. The thing with Fusion is you're building everything with nodes. And so if I have some text, I can make some text here. If I wanna put it over this image, I can use something called a merge node. That lives right here in this panel. I can take this icon and just drag it in. And I'll drag it on top of this line to where it turns it blue. And then I can take the output of this text and plug it into the green merge. And look what happens. There's some text on top of our original image. So that's how you stack things in Fusion is you use a merge node. Now, at this point, you're probably like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Layers, uh, nodes, why? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like so much work. <laughs> That's my best walking, okay? It seems like a lot of work to use this merge node and connect everything when you could just drag a new layer on top. But check this out. 
Let's say we want to add some text. You can do some fancy shortcuts here. So if I select brightness and contrast here, that's the last node before I want to add my text over, I can just click on text right here. Boom, like that. And what it will do is allow me to quickly add text over it. So I don't have to make this merge myself. I don't even have to move these nodes around a bunch. It will put them kind of in the node flow for me. As you may have noticed, it kind of just throws it wherever it wants, which isn't always ideal. But once you do get used to Fusion, it is pretty quick to add stuff like new layers. In fact, I could take this text. I'll just drag a new text over here, type some text, and then watch this. I can take the output, that's the square right here, this little gray square, and I can drag this instead of on top of this node, I could drag it on top of this little white square right here. And when I do that, look what happens. Boom, adds a merge node, puts this text into the foreground, puts this here into the background of the merge, and oh baby, we're off to the races, and it's just with one fell swoop. <laughs> in one one motion you want to see it again in slow motion no problem i'm just gonna take the output here now put it on top of the output of this one and bam that's a good merge no <laughs> So let's get rid of this text and do something helpful here. Here's a little bonus tip. If you want to add some more media, if you want to add another picture or footage or something, you can find it in the media pool. I have some visual effects assets here and I can drag this down into the flow and that makes another media in. Then I can take the output and merge it over this and look at that. We have our movie over our original movie and I can select this merge and change the apply mode, the transparency mode of this to something like screen and look at that. Now we have a rainy scene, oh baby. Movie magic is just that easy. Next tip, how to adjust timing. Because you also might notice that there's no timeline. What kind of compositing app has no layers panel and no timeline? What the hell is even that? <laughs> All is not lost. If we go over here to keyframes, we click on this little button. That's gonna bring up kind of, kind of a timeline. This is where if we hit this little button right here. That's going to kind of set our zoom for our keyframes panel. This is where we can adjust the timing of any of our clips. And so I could take this rain1.mov and I can move this back and forth and use different parts of it. I can have it end a little sooner if I want to. So it kind of runs out. And I can do some kind of basic editing and retiming things here by sliding it back and forth. I can even grab the edge of this if I'm real gentle and I can trim this clip and kind of move it around just like I would in the edit page, but here inside of Fusion. So a lot of people get really confused about how do I adjust the timing in Fusion? This is how you do it with the keyframes panel. You move it back and forth like this. And it's not really obvious because it's not called timing or timeline or anything with time. It's called keyframes. And half the time you're not even adjusting keyframes here. You're adjusting when things happen. So you can kind of think of it as like the animation, the motion panel. So now we have this part of our rain on top of our footage. Oh baby. Let's make our rain a little bit bigger. I'm going to do that by adding a special node called a transform node. That's with this little icon right here. I can grab this and drag this down. Oh baby. Push up the size a little bit. Make those raindrops a little bigger. Now we have lots of rain. Maybe we want to make them a little bit blurrier. I can add some blur just by adding a blur node here. And I can also adjust the transparency of this by selecting the merge and adjusting this little slider here to blend. I can take that up or down. So I can kind of push this down a little bit just so it's a little bit more subtle. And now we have this subtle rain that looks pretty darn good because it's supposed to be pouring rain in this shot. It's time to render it out. How do you render things out? That brings us to number five. Number five, how to render things out of Fusion so that you can actually turn it into a movie and not just a Fusion comp. Chances are you're probably working on some kind of timeline, some kind of edit, in which case you switch back to the edit page just by clicking the edit page and your comp is already on that clip. That's what's amazing is that our comp is already here in the timeline. So we don't have to render it out. We don't have to do anything. Look, I can just play this back and guess what? There's our comp with the rain. Beautiful, right? Isn't that awesome? So then I just treat this like any clip in our movie. It's just edited a little bit, just like I wouldn't render out every single clip that I color grade. I don't have to render everything out of Fusion. It can just live in the timeline. And then when it's time to render our movie, we can just switch over to the deliver page. Then you can render this out just like you would any edit. There's no rendering beforehand. There's no going in between apps like you might 
be used to doing in some kind of suite that's creative, you know, just like a whole bunch of apps that all are supposed to work together and sometimes they do. And hey, this whole movie is something that I go through doing the major VFX for Infusion on this video right here. So click that, let's hang out together, let's do some movie magic Infusion, and uh, I'll see you see over there, okay? So click, click that, do that thing that you do. You just, that's all you have to do. I've had like 15 coffees today. <laughs> Not really, this is decaf.